praying that, that James gets the deer he's after right now. I know exactly where he's at. I'm wondering what stand he's in. Maybe he'll call me later to talk to him. But I, I'm wondering if he's sleeping in the A&M room. He's in Menard, Texas, huh? And there's an A&M room there. And they put me in that next time when I went there. They it abused me like that. Abused me. It was good for you. Yeah, right. Amen. Yeah, it was good for me. It's always a good time to be there. Amen. Good to have you here, Skyler. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 10. And then we're going to backtrack. But we're going to 1 Corinthians 10. You know, the scripture tells us the Old Testament was written for our example. And what they went through was for our example. And so we have to pay attention to it. The Israelites, when they, the Exodus, how many know the word Exodus is also the word exit? Amen. We have it up somewhere in this building. We used to have it. Y'all know the way out if trouble happens. Amen. But the Exodus, amen, the Exodus as they were moving out of Egypt and their journey to the promised land, you know, their story is not one of starting at point A and going to point B. It wasn't that way. It wasn't a straight line. I often thought if God really loved us, he'd save us and take us. You know, we would have to stay here. But there's a reason why God leaves us here. Amen. So that we can fulfill purpose. But their path was a, was a torturous one, if, if anything. And if you saw it drawn on the map, which I'll show you again in a minute, you might have one of those what in the world moments. Clearly, I know when I showed it Sunday, many of you may not have recognized the fact that they traveled so far south before they ever went back up north and how they went around in circles. So, and I was telling folks, you, most of you have a Bible. You have maps in the back of your Bible. But we don't often look at them to see what happens. And if you read the Exodus story, you will see where they're at while they're traveling. Amen. And it's kind of mind blowing that they're that far. And the question you got to ask yourself is why? We'll talk about that a little bit tonight. First Corinthians chapter 10. Amen. Verse 1. Paul said, For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now the cloud was the cloud that followed them during the day. The sea, of course, speaking of the Red Sea. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now, it's kind of a spiritual saint thing there, but it has to do with Moses being like a spiritual father to them. But just walking through there, sometimes there's what I call a, a baptism of suffering. And that's what they went through together to get where they're at. They all ate the same spiritual food, amen, which was manna that came down out of heaven. Again, the word manna means what is it? Man, they didn't know what it was. I, you know, I know we all imagine what? A loaf of bread, right? Just a loaf of bread falling. Until I got to Texas, and then folks said it could have been tortillas. Amen. But either way, it was bread that came down out of heaven, and that's when you hear Jesus use the word, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that he was, here we go, the bread of heaven. So, I mean, he's a, he's a lot of things, wasn't he? He's the bread of heaven. He's the rock. We're going to talk about that here. All drank from the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. So the rock, again, that was struck, that Moses struck, was going to strike Christ. Amen. He's going to get struck later on. But he was the rock that followed them. Nevertheless, with most of them, so where are we at right now? We're in the New Testament. This is important. So he, uh, Paul's backing up. If you understood Paul's life, he's a Pharisee. And as a Pharisee, they had memorization. They memorized the first five books of the Bible. So he knows this book front to back. Amen. He's used it before. So as he's sharing it, he's sharing it now with new believers. He said, nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples for us that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat, drink, and they rose up to play. Amen. You, we're gonna, we'll get on that later on, the golden calf, amen, that they made. Uh, if you understand the ten plagues, and I, I can't prove all this to you now, but it's just a teaching that out of those ten plagues, nine of them had to do with idolatry. They were idols, frogs, the, the sky, all these things. It, so when God sent plagues, he attacked their idols, amen, the Egyptian idols. So he said, we must not indulge in sexual immorality, as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. Talked about lifting up the serpent this Sunday, amen, on, on a stick. Nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. 
Now, these things happen to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed he fall. In other words, be careful thinking that you always save, you always good, but thank God for grace. Can I get an amen? Amen. No temptation has overtaken you. That is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will always provide the way of escape, known as an exit. Amen. That you may be able to endure it. So on Sunday, we talked, and we showed you this map. Amen. And we showed you that over here is Goshen. It's where they were. And most of the plagues that hit in Egypt did not bother them there in Goshen. And when they left Goshen, they traveled south, and then they crossed the Red Sea. Now, in, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, you could have just went along the seashore, or better yet, you could have went down here by Bitter Lake and just cut through that little pass. It's just a whole lot better. If you had Google, you could have done this, but they didn't. Amen. They headed south, and then they ended up way over here in Canaan, Jerusalem, way up here at the top. And that right there, that's the Jordan River that Joshua and the troops crossed. Now, go to the next slide, and this is kind of what it looks like. Amen. They started right here. They went down and crossed over here. Ended up here in Mount Sinai. I got, uh, they got how many uh, commandments? There was 20. Y'all know that, don't you? Yeah, there were 10. They busted them, deleted them, and then they got 10 more. Okay. All right. Then they, they, they were all pretty much the same. I'm pretty sure they were. But they, then they, they kind of hung out here about 40 years. And they shot up over here, and they ended up over into Jericho. So when I look at this, I, you, the question always comes to mind, why? Why does that? And then I remember, I told you on Sunday, that God said, I'm going to lead you. The issue was that he led them that route. Amen. It turns out their 40-year road trip was not only a fact, it was also a metaphor filled with all types of examples for us to follow. Amen. For we search for meaning in our lives because in our hearts, we know that we are on a journey as well. And many of our lives have looked like this map right here. Amen. We started planning things, you know, and it, Perhaps there's marriage involved, and there were children and grandkids, and things took a twist and a turn and, and a bump. And a, and a, that's the word I'm thinking. Now, I'm thinking about the pit. Uh, never mind. I, reroute. Have you ever heard reroute on, in your, on your phone? Recalculating? Amen. It's, it's, and that's what I got last week. So it's awfully hard to see past the bend in the road that is today to tomorrow what it might hold we think we know where we're going and maybe we do many of us have a very specific goal in mind what we're going to get there and the israelites they had been slaves for 400 years amen that's a lot of generations there in egypt amen and, and because of that i believe being children of abraham they had a right to something different they had a right to this promised land that that they were told about and getting out of egypt and out of slavery sounded mighty good on the front end Amen. A lot of times the, the, when you get a call to do something, you go, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. That sounds like a great job. Yeah, I'll move to Alaska and do that. So you get there and you endure a winter. Amen. My daughter calls me. She said, Dad, it's 12 degrees here in midday. I'm glad you're enjoying Colorado, baby girl. Amen. It was 80 here, and then, of course, it dropped on us. But, uh, but hey, we deserve this weather. I can tell you all day, we deserve it. But on, the, uh, on their way of this great road trip to end all road trips, Things got a little tough, as they will on any road trip that you're on. There's going to be some bumps. There's going to be a no bridge to cross. There's going to be a Red Sea, and, of course, a, an army pursuing them, ready to haul them back to Egypt, and they ran out of what they believed at times was no food and no water, weariness, more attacking armies. This happened to them for 40 years. He meant, but God never left them. He stayed with them. In any of these circumstances, and I want you to think to yourself, how would you have handled it? Amen. Would you have complained? Would you have been a part of the complainers? You know, uh, I have met people, it just seems to be their part of their nature to bicker, complain, and whine. And it's been a part of my nature not to bicker, complain, and whine. Amen. I've just learned that if there are certain things I cannot change. And when I got hold of this principle, what I cannot change, I will not let it change me. It changed my life. And there are times you'll come to church and let's say it. The, the overhead may not be working. Well, we're going to have church anyway. Well, the drummer might be sick. We're going to have church anyway. Amen. Uh, well, they, they, this happened or that. We're going to have church anyway. Amen. I've just learned how to flow with it. I've had, I've had church with, under a light at, out at the ranch. We've had powers go. Many of you have been there with me. Amen. You just learn how to not complain about it because complaining doesn't help, does it? And evidently it affects God because it affected him surely here. 
So was there anything wrong with a slave longing for a better land? No. Is there anything wrong with you who have had a, a hard life wanting something better? No. There's nothing wrong with that. Genesis chapter 12 tells us that God promised this to them. This was a promise. The Lord had said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. This is, this is that biblical thinking here for you to understand that not only was Abraham a father to the uh, Jews, but also to the Gentiles, and we were grafted in. So every blessing in the Bible that the Scripture talks about would bless them is also our blessing. It's something that we hold on to. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. You should be bothered by the fact that God loves you so much that if somebody curses you, God's going to curse them. And I know some people throw that up in other people. You curse me, you want to see what God, I'm not that, I, I, want, I don't want somebody cursed because they curse me. I want them to be a little bit careful because I know what God can do as a parent to somebody else who messes with his kids. Can I get an amen? Amen. Keep that in mind. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot, of course, nephew, went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haram. So he hasn't even had Isaac yet. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people and they had, uh, that had acquired in Haram, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. So Abraham had already been. He, he traveled all the way over to where Jerusalem is, into Canaan. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord and who had appeared to him. Go back to the map, sis, the, uh, the more concise map, if you would. There it is. So he ended up way over here. Amen. So he's, he hung out in this area here. So he'd already been there. Because I hear people say at times, well, the, 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 even today, the Jews don't have a right to that land. Let me tell you, the Jews don't look at your opinion or my opinion. They, the Israelites looked at this book and say, you know what? Our father was promised this land by Jehovah God. Amen. So this is our land. Genesis 13, 14, the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, look around from where you are to the north, the south, the east, and the west. All the land that you see I will give you, and your offspring went forever. Genesis 17, 8, the whole land of Canaan where you are now reside as a foreigner, I will give you as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. And we understand when it comes to real estate, you got to have your homes divided up, your house plotted, and all of these things and surveyed. Well, this was God surveying and giving Abraham a green light. Therefore, when they went into the land, the ites were there, the Gergeshites, the Canaanites, the, the Philistines were there, but they were squatters, literally squatters. They had other places to go to, but they stayed there in that land. So this is very important for you to understand. As Moses began to travel, he had this promise in the back of his mind that God was going to look after them and was going to get them there eventually. And there's, so there was nothing wrong in having that kind of desire. Now, how many know we all have desire? We have things that we want to get done. We have... Uh, we would like to go from A to Z instead of dealing with all the other alphabet in the middle. But despite the huge detour, he was leading them cloud by day, a cloud that possibly helped protect them from the burning rays of the desert sun, a pillar of fire by night, probably providing them with a, a night light and with heat on cold desert nights. And it gets extremely cold there. So where did he lead them on that detour? To the southernmost part of that map, out of the way location on their trip was to Mount Sinai, and their very place where God entered into a covenant with Israel where he promised to be their God, and as they would promise to be his people, it was also the mountain where he gave them his law whose commandments served to define them as a people. You remember when Moses came down out of the mountain? His face was glowing. Man, I'm going to tell you, there are times when you get in the presence of God, it's just like you're glowing. It's, it's, you know, they've been to church, man, whether it was in their church or in their car or their home, they were glowing. But here's the thing about Moses. After the glory left, he kept his face covered. Now, why would he do that? He did that so that the people would think he still got to shine. And I meet a lot of churches, just let me throw this out there to you, that's still running around with the cover on their face, but the shine gone a long time ago. Hey, man, I meet a lot of people that have a cover on their face, but they, they ain't got no shine no more. I just throw that in there just for fun. Amen. So here's my point. I have a dream. I know you have dreams. My dream is of forging people who love God and care for one another 
to complete my task on this earth. And whatever that task may be, and it seems like at times it does change, but it's always been to know Christ and to make him known. I want to know Jesus, and I want to make him known to other people. It's a simple task that I have, but it's taken me around, around, and around. Amen. Uh, and I don't know, maybe you would like to share what yours is someday and, and let people know about it. Maybe you should write it down. I talked with a lady yesterday who called me, and she said, Pastor, this is in my heart. I want to do this. I was, uh, and she walked through, you know, without me going too deep, she walked through abuse when she was young. She was a teenage mom, and, and she said, I just want to help people. And I said, have you ever wrote your testimony down? Have you ever wrote your passion down? Have you ever wrote? She said, no. I said, well, write it down. I said, you don't have to get explicit with it, but just write it down. Amen. Get, get, where, where is it you want to go with what God has in your heart? And she, you know, she showed up at church on Sunday. So she's, she's in a place in her life where she's got to, you got to formulate it. You got you to make an idea. What, what am I going to do here in this life? But the journey we're on, sometimes we move from, again, point A to point B directly, sometimes like the Israelites. And it, it, is, it is weird. When I first started pastoring, I thought it was point A to point B. Now, this is fun. This is easy. And then life happened. You know, I mean, when I first started, I was, in, I was in a house. Amen. And then I moved to a motel and then to a blue block building, H. And, and then from there, we, we moved to another building. And then, I, and then it was taking another 40 years to lap around somewhere and ended up out in New Caney. I did, the only thing I knew about New Caney is there was a camp there. That was the only thing I knew. And there was a heart's chick. That's all I knew about that place because I went there when I was a young youth pastor, you know. And here I'm back out there again, and, and what, what, look what the Lord has done. And wouldn't trade it for nothing. Amen. It's, it's, been a, it's been a hard lap, you know, with a lot of apologies and I'm sorry's and stuff. But on the other hand, making those trips, it, it wasn't what I had in plan. But I believe that the cloud led the children of Israel. And I believe if you pay attention to life, God's been leading you. Amen. He's been bringing you through places and putting you through places that you didn't think you were going to go. Amen. Matter of fact, can, can I tell you, God reveals himself to us in what I'd call the not yet. Everybody say not yet. You know, it's like, are we there yet? Not yet. You're not there yet. Amen. But you're on your way, but not yet. And it hadn't yet. Amen. What he wants more than anything is our longing to have him be our God. What he wants is to share the journey with us, to call us his own, for us to turn, call him the one we love and the one we depend on, and call him Abba and Father. A living, loving, vibrant covenant relationship. That's what he was after. See, man, when I, when I look out, I was talking to a sweet sister on my way here, you know, Penny Brown. Penny's pastor, and he served under me for quite a few years, and, and he passed away last year, and he's younger than I am. It's one of those devastating losses, and, and she, she's literally crying on my phone, and we, we're talking, and it was a need for us just to, Talk, and she started going back and she began to share about what it was like when we first started as a church and how much fun it was as a small group getting together and the joys of all that and, and as we walked through it I said Penny you know Kent you just like I do that us pastors are here to prepare people for what's next amen and are we there yet not yet we're not there yet but one day we'll all be there amen because there's an end to this and there's a beginning there but until that we're in this journey of detour Pothole. That was the word I was thinking of a while ago. Amen. Speed bumps. We're going to have these. So principle number one, detours can be God's way of calling us to himself in what I'd call the not yet. He's calling us. Again, let me just mention what I was going to say about Penny. She is with her grandkids. We got to talk about grandkids. And I'm going to tell you, they, there's the closest thing to a good dog that you could ever have. Amen. They're just fantastic like that. Love grandkids. And we got talking about the fact that sometimes our own children will push away from us and do things that hurt us, and, and they'll say, because they know they can push our buttons and, 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 and grieve us, but then when they make that turn, there's nothing we wouldn't do for them. Amen. There's, and this is what I feel God was doing. He loved his children. He still loves us. Amen. And he puts us on a route, and there are times that, that he's looking, going, you know, and we want the water now. You're going to get water. I'm not going to let you die of thirst. I'm not going to let you die of hunger. I, matter of fact, I said to you Sunday, not even their shoes wore out. Their clothes didn't wear out. That has to be a miracle for a man to look at his wife about four years into the promise, uh, I mean, on the way to the promise, and said, babe, you notice something? Your shoes ain't wore out yet. 
Oh, I didn't, oh, look at that. That's your heaven. I've still got soles on the bottom and the bling bling on the top. And amen. I got the swoosh sign on my tennis shoe. Everything looking good. It had wore out. Look at what a miracle. Why is that? Oh, you love me like that. Amen. And when you understand that God puts you through a place like that and he just loves you. So when we do rebel, it breaks his heart. And that's what we see. Let me tell you, in the Old Testament, we see a very extreme of it. You know what Penny and I said before we got off the phone? Thank God for grace. Amen. Because right now, I mean, she's going, she's going, she's, pray for Penny. Have a hard time. She said, Pastor, me and my Bible don't even get along right now. And I said, that's okay, girl. It's all right. Amen. There's a lot of that Bible you got in you. Amen. The message will find you. Hallelujah. You're going to be, but a lot of people have felt your hurt this year. A lot of people have felt your pain. Amen. And you got to know you're going to see that man again and whatever God has planned for us later. When Moses stayed on top of Mount Sinai receiving the law of God, he was MIA for 40 days. And again, it's hard for us to put in, in our mind 40 years and 40 days and how long that is. But 40 days is a long time for a leader to be gone. The Israelites got up to no good in the absence of their leader. They talked Aaron into making a calf, an idol for them that they could worship, something that seemed familiar and that reminded them of the good old days in Egypt, the way the folk back there used to worship. And I will say this, as Penny and I are talking, she gone way back to the Blue Block building. And she's talking about pastor them were the best days. And I said, you know, most of the people I pastor were never a part of those days. Amen. And I never bring, I look, at, look back and I say, those were good days, but I don't live in those days. Amen. I don't go back and say to myself, well, I wish we could do all that again. Mm -mm. We had our time. Amen. We had our moment. H I, I, one of the things I never forget is after an Easter, me and you leaving with uh, Dwayne and, and your friend Boudreaux and going to Augusta, Georgia to the Masters. Amen. I preached for my brother-in-law then in Marion, and, and Boudreaux got saved. But here's where the fun part. When we got there, Dwayne, it was cold. He jumped out of the van, his old minivan, uh, renting, I don't know where we got it from, and dove into the swimming pool at night. Huh? Screamed, jumped into water, hollered. Amen. But those are memories I go back and I, I, I soak them in. But listen, I'm still making memories. I'm still having fun. Amen. I remember marrying Kobe and, and Miss. Amen. I'm still having fun, though. I go back, my mind floods back, and I thank God. You know, we lost a, we didn't lose him. We'll see him later. But Phil Spark passed away this week. I love Phil. Amen. He's my AC guy. So I, I, I have a place, and uh, uh, AC broke down. I called a friend of mine, Sam Campbell, to come in and take care of it. And I said, by the way, tell Sam he's my new AC guy. Amen. What am I saying? Memories are starting over again. Amen. I, I just, I can't go back. I can't get him back, but I can grab somebody here. Amen. Start working on them here. Exodus chapter 33 tells us, And the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go up to the land I promised an oath to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. Now, chapter 33 is after 32, of course. Chapter 32 is when the golden calf issue came down. Amen. He come down with the ten tablets. He got mad. He broke them. Amen. God gave him ten more tablets, of course. But he, and he took the golden calf, he ground it up, he threw it in, made people go down and drink the water. I have never been that mean to people. I've never said, you stiff-necked, ornery, sinful, doggone you, amen, come here and drink this bitter water. You know, us pastors, we're nice today. Can I get an amen? But Moses just got fed up after 40 days. You've seen the parting of the Red Sea. You've seen the miracle of the snake on the pole. You've seen all this, this, and this, and you still want to calf. You still want to go back to your old worship place. Some of y'all came out of churches that was doing this right here up front. Amen. And every now and then you get a mind thing, and you go, man, I miss him hymnals. I miss that swinging of the arm. I miss uh, one, three, and five. Amen. I, 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 miss, I miss the pastor standing up there with a suit on. And, amen. I miss this, this, and this. Yeah, some of you do. But I don't, evidently you don't want to go back to it or you're still here. Amen. And by the way, in case you, you don't think people listen to me on Sunday. We got folk that listen in this church. Amen. Thank you, Marie. Amen. So here's, here's what he says. I, I'm going I'm to give it to you. I'm going to give you your land. I'm going to bless you with everything I said. I'll send an angel before you. I'm going to send an, a representative. To go before you're gonna have a cloud, you're gonna have a fire, you're gonna get your manna, and I'm gonna send an angel before you, 
and I'm going to drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Verse 3, go up to the land flowing with milk and honey. I'm going to give that to you, but I will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people, and I might destroy you on the way. <laughs> God talk. That's God talk right there. Amen. I, I tell you what, I'm going to send somebody. I'm going to let Joseph take y'all out of here. Amen. And it's going to be really good. Y'all going to have a good time. Amen. You're going to get a cloud that day, and you're going to get fire at night, and we're going to still drop all the goodies to you, and you're going to get food. Everything's going to be all right. But I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't going with you. That's when Moses said, God, if you don't go, I ain't going. Because this whole thing's about you. I appreciate the miracle. I appreciate the guidance. But if I got to be without you, I don't. So this brings us to our next principle. It's not the getting there so much as the how we go about getting there. Moses wanted God present. And there are times I'm in church, and even tonight with a three-piece band, I just want his presence. Amen. We can just have his presence. Then, then I feel good about tonight. Amen. That's what this is whole, all about. This is what detours do to us. And there are times that God will give you a detour. Uh, you know, I know the route back home, Bama, and back here, at the back of my hand. I don't need any Googling or anything, but I, I needed help this week, you know, when I had to come back and pick up a set of car keys and a passport. I mentioned that on Sunday. If you weren't here, when I got to Alabama, our car keys got stolen along with Jill's license. Katie brought them to Monroe, and I had to go down. And I hit detour after detour. But after I quit screaming, after I quit being mad about it, and I settled my spirit down. And I said, you know what? Me getting mad and wrecking ain't going to help. Because it ain't my car, my sister-in-law. Amen. Uh, me uh, get, getting a ticket ain't going to help. Amen. I'm just going to close myself down just a little bit. I'm going to enjoy the ride. And I saw things that I haven't seen since I was a little boy in a little town running through Mississippi and Louisiana, and I thank God. Amen. It's a detour, not such a bad thing after. Amen? So getting there is so important. It's how we get there. If it's a claim we aspire to or acquiring wealth that motivates us, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with having wealth. There's nothing wrong with, with uh, you know, popularity as long as you learn how to use it correctly. Amen. These are human needs, but the need to feel loved, the need to feel secure, that our physical needs are met, Desiring to be loved or to have enough money in and of itself, again, it's, it's not wrong. But just as the Israelites were tempted to go back to what had been familiar in Egypt, the worship of idols, worshiping the idols of the world, will not truly get us there. Amen. There's nothing that I have found in this world over 60, almost 61 years now, that satisfies like Jesus. There's nothing. Amen. I, I was telling the band, but I love music. Amen. I, just, I love worship music. I just love music. It does something to my spirit. It, it, it revives me. It, it blesses me. It helps me. Amen. To be with people, the people of God that I love, it, it helps me. To hear your success story helps me. To weep with people. You know, and again, with Penny, you'd have to know our relationship. But I could tell she was, she was going back and she was having some fun with things that we did. She said, you remember that time, Pastor? We didn't have nothing. And after church, you told me to go to McDonald's and buy 27 hamburgers to feed the church. Can you imagine going to McDonald's, buying 27 little hamburgers? Sound like a youth group, don't it, Joseph? To feed the church. But I'm feeding the church. And she said, I went there and it was almost closed. And the guy said, You want how many hamburgers, man? I need 27 hamburgers. And we came back, we drank Coke's chips, because that's all you had. Amen. And 27 little hamburgers. I thought, You got a memory, girl. Amen. That's, that's some funny stuff. But those are what, that's what life's made of. Amen. Those memories. But can't go back to it. Hallelujah. I can remember it, though. So likewise, being willing to compromise what we know to be true and right, which is at our heart, our own integrity for the sake of getting there faster. I just want to get there fast. I'm just going to take a shortcut. I, uh, I know you are just like me. You get impatient out there on that freeway, and you see that you missed an exit. Oh, I get it from my dad. My dad was not real happy about missing exits. We weren't on interstate much my whole life. And I remember coming back from Birmingham. This just hit me. Birmingham, Alabama. Hey, man, I just had surgery on my leg. I had a cast. And uh, dad liked Wendy's. They did, we didn't have Wendy's back home, but he loved the Wendy's chili. Hey, man, so he got a, a, a thing, bowl of chili, had it up on the dash, and he missed the exit. And he just got mad, and he whooped that 71 LTD 
across the, uh, the medium. And that chili whooped up all over him. Amen. And they spilled on him and he cut across. Sometimes it's just best to go on down to the next exit. Amen. Make that turn. Well, let, let, me, let me start closing here. Hallelujah. In the same way, stepping on a fellow sojourner is not the will of God as we travel. Amen. And running over other people. Amen. It's, it's just not what God would want for us. So much of what we long for will turn to ashes in our mouths if we haven't earnestly sought to align our goals with the goals for us. And these are his goals. Luke chapter 10, verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? Hmm, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 28, you have answered correctly. You know, most of the time we know the answer before we ask the question. Amen. He knew the answer right away. He said, do this and you will live. And the scripture says he felt like he was unable to do it. Uh, I don't think God put such a demand on us that it is a goal that all of us have to love God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. It's a goal I've got. And again, on my best days, maybe, but it's still my goal to love God with all my heart, soul, amen. That we love him, and that's all he wanted. Let's be honest. This whole pilgrimage that we see through Exodus was just a test to see, if do you love me? Amen. Will you obey me? Obe obedience is probably the most powerful thing in covenant. Do you, do you, do you love me? Are you obedient to me? It, you know, would he become the pearl of great price? I think of the other New Testament scripture where a man was digging, he found a pearl, and he went and sold everything he had just so he could own that pearl, pearl of great price. That's what he is. And when you fall in love with him, let me tell you, there were people that made that journey, Joshua and Caleb, because they kept their love alive. Amen. They were obedient. They pressed through. Hallelujah. To get to the promised land. And by the time they got to the promised land, they still had another couple of million folk with them. But they were all youngins. And if we could train up our young ones, if we could train the young people in this generation, because I, I really believe that they're, they're looking for fathers, they're looking for mothers, they're looking for spiritual people around them to help show them the way. I think if we could train them up, amen, there'll be a generation that will cross over. I believe in a promised land, but I don't believe that promised land is heaven. Some people preach the promise. It's not. The promised land is full of giants. Amen. It's full of uh, things that can take you out. Amen. you got to fight them. And there's a fight in this life, and there's a spiritual warfare. Amen. There's a pressing in. Amen. And another thing is that we learn to treat our fellow sojourners with the utmost care, concern, and respect on our way. Respected people is such a powerful thing. It doesn't take a whole lot to do it. I had an opportunity today to respect a young lady in a Chinese restaurant. When it was over, before I left there, I, I gave her a big old hug. Boy, she received me so well. But it's just out of respect. I respect the fact that you worked this hard. Amen. And you had to put up with nonsense in this building. Amen. Respected people. So don't buy into the lie that life is all about you achieving your dream and what it's all up to you to get yourself to your promised land it's not god has something for you in the journey and the detours amen a lot of things that we go through again is for someone else so whatever it is god this year as, and david was up here praying he said lord if you got to make it harder on me then do I, that's not my prayer amen I'm, I'm gonna stand with david you know i'm gonna love him through his hardships and i'll remind him he prayed for that I, not me Amen. I'd like it to be a little bit easier. Even if i got to take a detour, let it be a little bit easier. Can I get an amen? Amen. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. It's that simple. Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you for those watching tonight. As we detour toward the promised land, that we would see example after example of how life should be, how we can treat others better, but more than anything, to love you more. I thank you for the intimate time tonight. I thank you for the gathering with friends. I ask your blessing as we leave this place. Prep us for the weekend, the things we've got to do this week. Give us wisdom. Lord, I'm asking for wisdom. Give us wisdom. And Lord, as 
we prepare to uh, lay the body of Phil Sparks down, I pray for Pam and his family. God, that you would uh, be with them, give them peace, peace here in this valley. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would anyone like any water?